For the Daily Radio News on 94.3 WKUF, I'm David Jackson for Wednesday, June 6, 2016. At a press conference yesterday, Flint officials said that they are working to comply with an EPA directive to boost chlorine levels. Ron Fonger of the Flint Journal reports, Mayor Karen Weaver says that she is requesting continued technical assistance from the state and federal government to ensure that the upcoming installation of water treatment equipment is done properly. Mayor Weaver says, however, that despite the federal directive, the city will not be rushed, adding that the city does not want to move too quickly because it could make things worse. Reports note that when the city switched to Flint River water, chlorine was added to the system without proper conditioning chemicals, and the unbalanced levels led to pipes leaching contaminants into the system. In October 2014, Ron Fonger reported that GM was a concern then that using Flint City water with the increased chlorine content was causing corrosion in their engines during the manufacturing process. With those concerns, the company switched back to Lake Huron Water in a special deal with Flint Township. Interim Flint Utilities Director Joe Lisa McDay says that the city must be cautious while changing chemicals to the aging water system and said that the June 10th date is a target, not a mandate, to install new EPA-required chemical feeding equipment. In election primary news, Democratic nominee hopefuls Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders were put before a vote in California, New Jersey, and four other states yesterday, where Vermont Senator Sanders won North Dakota and Montana, former Secretary of State Clinton won New Jersey, New Mexico, and California, and the two split the delegates in South Dakota. In California, the Wall Street Journal reports that a record of nearly 18 million voters turned out for the primary vote, where Mrs. Clinton won by at least 10%. After California was called for Mrs. Clinton, Senator Sanders spoke to supporters, thanking them for being part of the revolution, adding that next Tuesday his campaign will continue the fight in Washington, D.C. for the last primary. Sanders used his speech to note that he does not support presumptive Republican nominee Donald Trump and noted to the crowd that the the American public will not support a candidate whose primary stance is racism and bigotry. In other election news, former Clinton staffer Brian Pagliano confirmed in a court filing on Tuesday that the Justice Department has granted him limited immunity from prosecution in exchange for testimony in regards to Clinton's alleged mishandling of classified documents. Presumptive Republican nominee Donald Trump, according to the Washington Post, is backpedaling after making allegedly racist remarks about the judge presiding over two lawsuits against his for-profit school, Trump University. Prominent Republican Party members immediately denounced his remarks, even as Trump wrote in an apology that he feels justified in questioning whether he is receiving a fair trial from the Indiana-born son to Mexican immigrant parents. And Libertarian nominee Gary Johnson said in an interview with Washington, D.C.-based The Hill magazine that if elected, he would aim to eliminate domestic surveillance departments like the National Security Agency and would eliminate the Federal Internal Revenue Service in favor of a single federal consumption tax. North Korea, according to a U.S. State Department official, may have restarted production of plutonium fuel. Reuters reports that the assessment came a day after the U.N. nuclear watchdog group found indications that the DPRK has reactivated a plant to recover plutonium from spent reactor fuel from their main nuclear power complex. The official declined to confirm whether they used satellite or intelligence sources to assess North North Korea's activities and declined to comment on how much North Korea could produce using this reprocessing method. The International Atomic Energy Agency, which does not have access to North Korean nuclear power plants, said that they have seen resumed activity at a processing plant. North Korea vowed in 2013 to restart all nuclear facilities after multiple reactors were shut down as part of an international disarmament for aid deal that later collapsed. In sports, the Blue Jays, Aaron Sanchez, threw 12 strikeouts and held the Tigers to one hit and zero runs going into the bottom of the ninth, where Toronto held a 2-0 lead against Detroit. But then in the bottom of the ninth, with Sanchez at just 93 pitches and only three outs away from his first career-complete game shutout, Jose Iglesias scored off an Ian Kinsler double with no outs, and two batters later, Miguel Cabrera drove in Kinsler to send the game into extra innings. In the bottom of the tenth, still tied at 2-2, Upton, Saltalamacchia, and Iglesias loaded the bases despite a Blue Jays challenge to the call at third. Then with no outs, Ian Kinsler looked at a first-pitch fastball, then hit a walk-off grounder to left.
The Tigers extended their win streak to five games, tying them with Kansas City for second place and leaving them just two and a half games out of first in the AL Central. Detroit plays again today against Toronto at 110. The NBA Finals continue tonight at 9 in Cleveland, where the Golden State Warriors lead the series 2-0 after decisive wins in Games 1 and 2 against the Cleveland Cavaliers. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.